And I will be Chiron. Hi, I'm Dana Good. I'm in the 12th grade, and I will be Lavinia. Hi, I'm Keely Kreitz. I'm also in the 12th grade, and I will be Tamara. Hi, I'm Seamus Stubbs. I'm in the 12th grade, and I will be Demetrius. I'm Wyatt Warner. I'm also in the 12th grade, and I will be Bastianus. We are doing Titus Andronicus. Act 2, Scene 3. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> unfurnished of our well-beseeming truth? Or is it Diane, habited like her, who hath abandoned her holy groves to see the general hunting in this forest? Saucy controller of our private steps, had I the power that some say Diane had, thy temples would be planted presently. With horns, as with accents, and the hound should drive upon thy newly transformed limbs. Unmannerly intruder as thou art, under your patience, gentle Empress, tis thought you have a goodly gift in horning. And to be doubted that you're more, and you are singled forth to try experiments. Joe, shield your husband from his hounds today. Tis pity they should take him for a stag. Me, Queen, your swarth Sumerian doth make your honor of his body's hue, spotted, detested, and abominable. Why are you sequestered from all your good train? If dismounted from your snow-white goodly steed and wandered hither to an obscure plot, I was in a barbarous moor, and if foul desire had not conducted you. And being intercepted in your sport, great reason that my noble lord be rated for sauciness? I pray you, let us hence, and let her joy her raven-colored love. This valley passing fits the purpose well. The king, my brother, shall have notice of this. Aye, for these slips have been made noted long, good king to be so mightily abused. Why, I have patience to endure all this. How now, dear sovereign and our gracious mother? Why does your highness look so pale and wan? Have I not reason, think you, to look so pale? They said they would tie me here unto the body of a dismal you and called me foul adulteress, lacious goth, and all the bitterest terms that e'er it did hear. And had you by not some wondrous fortune come this vengeance on me had they executed. So, revenge it, as you love your mother's life, or be ye not henceforth called my children. This is a witness that I am thy son, and this from me, struck home to show my strength. to her. First thrash the corn and then after burn the straw. This minion stood upon her chastity, upon her nuptial vow, her loyalty, and with that painted hope braves your mightiness. Shall she carry that into her grave? And if she do, I would I were a eunuch. Drag hence her husband to some secret hole and make his dead trunk pillow unto our lust. But when ye have the honey we desire, let not this wasp outlive us both to sting. Tamara, thou bearest a woman face. I will not hear her speak. Away with her. <laughs> Sweet lords, entreat her. Hear me but a word. Listen, fair madam, and let it be your glory to see her tears. But be your heart to them as unrelenting flint to drops of rain. Then did the tiger's young ones teach the dam. Oh, do thou entreat her, show a woman pity. What? Wouldst thou have me prove myself a bastard? Tis true, the raven doth not hatch a lark, but some say ravens foster forlorn children, the whilst their own birds famish in their nests. Oh, be thee to me, though thy hard heart say no, nothing so kind, but something pitiful. I know not what it means. Away with her. Oh, let me teach thee for my father's sake, who gave thee life when well he might have slain thee. Open oh, not thy obdurate ears, be not deaf. <coughs> Hadst thou in 
person ne'er offended me, even for his sake I am pitiless. Remember, boys, when I poured forth tears in vain to save your brothers from the sacrifice, but fierce Andronicai would not relent. Therefore, away with her, <laughs> and use her as you will. The worse for her, the better love